Friendship means little when it's convenient. Consequences. Those lines just sum up how beautiful and brutal, haunting and just brilliant this movie is. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button, ring the bell to be notified when I upload more videos coming soon. Let's dive in. If the original John Wick was a sleeper hit, no one expected to be as cool as it was. Plus John Wick 2 being an expansive sequel, upping the stakes, world building, and action. And John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum was a relentless action epic putting us in the seat of what John Wick was experiencing. Then John Wick Chapter 4 becomes the pinnacle of the series thus far. A true action masterpiece for the ages. If you've watched my channel for any time or know me, then you may have noticed I am a huge action movie fan, especially as it pertains to martial arts or sword fighting. One of my pet peeves in films is how choppy action can feel or how over-edited fight sequences can be. If you have talented actors or martial artists in your film, let the editing breathe and keep the camera wide to allow the choreography and natural talent to speak for itself. I really thought The Raid Redemption, one of my favorites, brought this trend back worldwide, but John Wick cemented it as a must for Hollywood action to stand out nowadays when it comes to fight choreography. And this fourth chapter is no exception. In fact, it raises the bar even further. It's amazing how each fight in this film, whether it's with guns, nunchucks, fists, or swords, is approached so distinctly. The natural raw physicality of everyone involved, from Donnie Yen to Keanu Reeves, and even random thug henchmen, are all allowed to shine. Wick himself is a force to be reckoned with as usual, relying on blunt force and practical technique over speed, strength, or flash. It matches what Keanu can do perfectly always has. It beads down the invincible hero trope as Wick always feels in danger, but there are a couple of spots where you're like, okay, yeah, P should be dead. But I can suspend disbelief given all he's been through and the thematic reasoning of a man unhinged with a mission letting nothing stop him. It's a testament to such long fight sequences, and believe me they are lengthy, that they're able to reinforce the character and the world through these sequences. There are a couple spots in some of the action scenes that I can see some complaining about zoning out and really feeling the length. I remember that being a criticism of chapter three because that happened to me in one sequence in that film. But here, let's just say I noticed. And while I think, yeah, maybe a couple could be trimmed if we were really to get down in the, the nitty gritty, but it didn't bother me. In fact, it feels like they went out of their way to address that and keep the fights engaging and constantly evolving. Noticing the length and sealing the length are two different things. Some of them are standard, brutal fun, and some are creative, and a few are a mix of both to become some of the most inventive and dynamic action sequences I have ever experienced. How they manage to balance flash and finesse and realism in their fights astounds me. Two in particular feel very video game influenced, and let's just say I was here for it. Freaking awesome. All of the John Wick movies have strong direction from Chad Stahelski as the former stuntman. He just does great, but here he elevates it to a new level of sophistication. His direction is impeccable, injecting such flavor and color in every frame, movement, set piece, you name it. And he was very open about wanting to nail the pacing in this one. And as I mentioned earlier, noticing the lengthy fights and feeling them are two different things. The fact that he was able to nail both the editing and choreography to create such a seamless flow of tension is mind boggling. Many were worried that like three, which sometimes felt like too much, that would be an issue here, given the length. Two hours and 49 minutes. But the director and the writers remember to let somber, more intimate moments shine through for Wick and many other memorable side characters to create breathing room for the story. And they nail it. There's a strong sense of three distinct acts here, something bigger films can struggle with, that assists the pacing helps no moment feel wasted, and each scene or plot reset feeling fresh. Also, humor is balanced here in such a good way that it never feels forced or tacked on. It just, it just works, sometimes to a darker extent, but it's still funny. Just about every side character helps to expand the already crazy cool lore of this world and are deserving of their own spinoffs. I know one is in the works that takes place before this film, but I'm hoping for more given the post credit scene. Donnie Yen brings a welcome sense of depth to his blind assassin Kane, whose fighting style is handled in such a respectful, cool way. The man's a legend, and he did wonderful. I could go through all of them, but two others are Scott Atkins, famous martial artist, actor in a fat suit, that was hilarious and yet an awesome highlight. And of course, the, another standout, Hiroyuki Sonata, who brings conviction to anything and everything he's in. Loved seeing him and Donnie in together. Can we get a prequel about Wick's ascension and meeting these guys, these close friends that he had? 
it would be great. We have the Continental prequel show to look forward to on top of Valerie and that other spinoff I mentioned. So we're already getting more from this world of where there is so much spinoff potential. I want a AAA video game though. John Wick Hex was a cool enough idea, but not for me. And this already feels like a game in many sequences. The character referred to as Mr. Nobody is the only character that I think they maybe struggled with finding a place for him story-wise. And it reminded me of the film Nobody, which I said it could cross over with, but that's not the point. But he's cool and quite likable, and where his story goes is entertaining. After listening to Screen Crush's breakdown of the themes from this movie, I love his role even more. I highly recommend that you check out their channel and that video as it breaks down the religious themes and symbolism that all the films carry. I wasn't always a fan of how religion is discussed, dismissed, or shown here, but when I heard it broke down thematically, it was pretty amazing. And I won't bother to dissect it here because I won't do as good a job as them. So just check out their awesome content. And let's just say that I don't know of many other straight up action films that carry the weight and sense of thematic maturity that the John Wick films do. Something I talk about often is needing something to make a film feel like it has real stake consequences. And I love that recurring motif in this series. And it's absolutely perfected here. If I have one major disappointment, and this is not a spoiler, it's just that I wanted and sort of expected to see more from the high table given the build-up. It's a small bummer, but leaves room for more in the future, where that portion wasn't paid off as much as I'd hoped for, or that was teased. But that's small fries compared to how great this movie is. Speaking of, the film ends in a restrained and quieter fashion than I think anyone expected, and it's all the better for it. It brings everything full circle right to the very first scene of the original film. It left me confused, as it feels like there's a proper ending to the series, but Ballerina I know takes place before this, which is the spinoff, but originally John Wick 5 was confirmed and was going to be shot back to back with this, until they decided to not, which was probably a better decision. At times it does feel like the plot from both films, prop whatever 5 possibly would have been, is folded in here, but Stanowski has been open about that he and Keanu just are taking a break, but he thinks that the studio has a plan for more and has mentioned being open to returning for another with Keanu if it does well and they have the ideas. So I'm sure we could get something. That feeling of finality is heavy. And honestly, it's a perfect ending to one of the best action films ever made and one of my favorite franchises of the last decade. This is one of those rare series where each in the series got better in some way or form until a masterpiece was made in the final or fourth. Well, that may be disputable on the very close quality of the first three, but this is easily the best in the franchise. I give John Wick chapter four, five out of five stars. Movie of the year, at least so far. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button, ring the bell to be notified when I upload more videos coming soon. Thanks so much and remember, always look for the good.